we did a boot camp, and in that boot camp, students had some tech lessons, but also some digital citizenship lessons. And so we kind of looked at boot camp as training for teachers and students, because we kind of did a train the trainer model, where we trained the teachers who then led the boot camp lessons. Historically, organizations, whether they be schools or businesses, have had acceptable use policies that really focused on the equipment, the systems, the servers, and the users signing something that says, I won't break it, I won't do anything malicious. And that probably worked when we were first getting computers on campuses and, and businesses, but it's not an educational document. It's, it's really a liability type of a thing. And so um, in education, after a while, you realize, well, this isn't working. This isn't, this isn't getting across messages we want to get across. Um, and so we looked at how can we adapt an acceptable use policy to be something that actually informs users about how to behave instead of how not to behave. Um, and then there's been a large digital citizenship movement to, to help kids be aware of how to behave online. Um, no different than teaching students or kids as they grow up to look both ways before crossing the street. Online is now their street. And, and it is where adults need to be stepping in and kind of helping to model behaviors and uh, kind of show how to act. Um, so, in the end, we wanted to create a digital citizenship agreement that people were signing, but that actually was proactive in helping people understand this is the proper way to behave, to be a part of our community, and use our online resources. We found a digital citizenship agreement that was well thought out, that, that had multiple people, educators, coming together to, to really get across what are those messages we, that are most important for students to agree to. Um, over at Ed Origami, uh, you can look that up online, they had a group of people come together to do just that. And so we, the nice thing about what they did is they licensed it under a Creative Commons license that allows people to take it, change it, reuse it, and, and then as long as we give credit to them. So, uh, of course, we do that because they gave us a good start. So the one that we have is, I think, really good for high school and middle school. Um, at Ed Origami, they have language for the lower grades as well, uh, but we just started working with the, the upper grade level one. We will list in the DCA a number of things like, what does it mean to respect yourself? Um, one of those things is choosing appropriate screen name. The digital citizenship agreement really basically is the, the digital citizenship is the net standard. Um, the, the agreement is all about respecting and protecting yourself and others and copyright. And all of that is part of the ICSI digital citizenship standards. It's really that one standard kind of encompasses one. Bullying is the one that comes up very easily for them. And while they recognize it, it is something that still happens. So um, students probably feel like they're kind of bored or they're always hearing about bullying and uh, online harassment. Why do we need to keep talking about that? One of the things that we try to get out in that conversation is how can you as a student, when you see online bullying of someone else, what can you do to help stop it? What does it mean to be a part of a community that is constantly sharing in ways that you are licensing your work to allow others to build on your ideas? You can use our networks, you can use our computer, but don't break them. Uh, so so that, those ones are quite a bit more focused on taking care of your laptop. If it's for, our, for example, our school hands out laptops to our students, and so we want them to take responsibility for the physical product. No one's going to have this memorized, uh, but it is something for us to continually go back to and teach from. We came up with that list based on our experience for what we think FAQs will be, uh, mostly for parents. A lot of the FAQs wrote with parents in mind, and also for bits of information that didn't really fit anywhere else in our laptop guide, but need to be in there, we put in the, in the FAQ. 